Maybe it was a disguise, perhaps a way of life. One way or another, Kirkwood police say the armed robber in this case was a man dressed as a woman. What they were really after, though, was this ATM that's hidden behind this shelf. By surveying contractors, we determined the job Jenny got should have cost 2000 not 4000 Kevin, my name is Mike Colombo here from Channel 4. I want to let you know we're recording. The police cars are gone, their lights replaced by lightning, and the protesters are also gone this morning, their loud cries replaced by thunder. It really is amazing. No one seriously injured as a result of these storms. Terry's up to his old tricks. Handing out flyers, taking money, and then disappearing. You don't have to look far to see the damage of an overnight smash and grab. Police helped the store owner here remove the door, and when you take a look inside, you can see what they did. They threw shelves around in an attempt to get whatever they could. What they were really after, though, was this ATM that's hidden behind this shelf. Good news for the store owner, that ATM is bolted to the floor. Right now, police are observing surveillance video. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, they'll be able to find the suspects here. We'll follow the story for you all day here on News 4 and CamoV.com. Bullets could be heard flying at the protest scene last night, and two people did suffer minor gunshot wounds. Mike Colombo right there as the scene unfolded. You need to disperse or you will be subject to arrest. A different night, but the day. same story in Ferguson. <laughs> Police went toe to toe with protesters, struggling to discern the peaceful from the punks. As the sour sting of tear gas filled the night sky, violence ensued. Two people were shot, four police officers were injured, and more than 30 people were arrested, including Billy Moreno from Austin, Texas. And there are people that are, that are angry and they're trying to figure out what to do, but you can talk to them. Police say using words wasn't enough to stop a small group of violent agitators from firing shots and throwing objects at officers. He says, look at this guy picking it up. He's about to pick this up and toss it back. I stood there and listened over the radio and heard the screams of those officers who were under gunfire. I went back to our SWAT vehicle and saw the gentleman laying in the back who had been shot. I saw a car pull up and drop a gentleman off. He had been shot in the hand. It was days walking down the street. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. We can't have this. When the madness finally gave way to morning light, picking up the pieces was a welcome chore so long as the streets were peaceful. Unsure what another day in Ferguson holds, refueling and reflecting was the order of the morning. Bringing some control to an otherwise chaotic group of people yeah. who you are protesting with. And yeah, chaotic, but very passionate and just helping them be the best version of what they're trying to do right now. A motive more clouded, it seems, as the days pass. Reporting in Ferguson, I'm Mike Colombo, News 4. The Cardinals start their run to a 12th World Series title, but already the team is winning the hearts of one Illinois family. This is quite a story. News 4's Mike Colombo shows what it means when the Cardinals say they are with four-year-old Charlie Patrick. Who is this? Mimi. Charlie Patrick had no choice. <laughs> we are Cardinals fans. From Gibson and Lou, dirt from Old Bush. I gave that out as Christmas presents mm -hmm. that year. And New Bush too. I think that might even be me right there in my white jersey. The Patrick family's Cardinal pride comes with some rules. If you root for the Cubs. Uh oh. I told you Charlie had no choice. Uh oh. No. no surprise, he's throwing just about everything these days. A positive sign for a kid who's faced some curveballs in his four short innings on Earth. There was no warning for the seizures. He would fall, he would hit his head. Always that danger of, of him hurting himself because of these seizures. For two years, the seizures became more frequent and intense. Doctors were baffled. We were helpless. Um, we were angry. We were sad. Um, we still were hopeful, though, that we were going to be able to figure out what was wrong with our son. The Patricks found hope at St. Louis Children's Hospital, where doctors diagnosed Charlie with a rare inflammatory brain disease called Rasmussen's encephalitis. The shrinkage on this side is caused by the encephalitis, which is the brain inflammation. As this MRI shows, half of Charlie's brain was under attack. 
Thankfully, a team of doctors had a plan to fight back. At our center here, we have about a 90% control rate with the surgery with complete seizure relief. And all of the patients with Rasmussen's encephalitis have been seizure-free or largely seizure-free after this operation. The eight-hour surgery was successful, but recovery stood on deck. We are not out of the woods yet. We've got a long way to go with Charlie. Amid the uncertainty, a familiar bird brought some much needed relief. Is he still back there? Oh! <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, that's funny. You give him a hug? Oh, big hug. Oh, good big hug. As if I needed another reason to love the Cardinals. I have not seen my son laugh that hard probably ever. A few days later, the Patricks received these messages of support from Cardinal manager Mike Matheny, pitcher Jason Mott, and outfielder Matt Holliday. I mean, it was that just blew me away. That was until John Jay and Daniel Descalso paid Charlie a visit. To come and, and just give a little boost of moral support to our family, you, you have no idea what that meant to us. Those feelings are mutual. It was great being there that day and, and to see him, you know, get excited when we walked in the room and, and be able to hang out with him and his family for a couple minutes. When you see, you know, somebody suffering through that as a four-year-old, you know, it just, it's one of those things that really touches your heart. Win or lose this postseason, the Cardinals' message remains the same. We're still with you, Charlie. 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 And it sounds like they'll be able to support each other for a long time. I think his chance of remaining seizure free for the rest of his life is very high. As far as a fairy tale ending, I'm hoping for full recovery for my son and I'm hoping for um, another World Series title for the Cardinals. Now that would be a fall classic. We're still with you, Charlie. I'm Mike Colombo, News 4.